We're here in Salt Lake City doing some interviews, so I thought I'd give you a little tour of our lighting setup. It's pretty much basic three-point lighting. We've got our key right here, and cameras are here. And basically, every time you're doing lighting, you want to get your camera set and figure out where your subject is going to be facing, and then make your lighting adjustments and decisions based on that. So we've got our cameras here. Camera A, it's a kind of a tighter close-up shot, probably like a medium shot. And we've got our wider angle right here. Back here behind this diffusion panel, we have a six bank and a four bank. And these are fluorescent banks. They're not actually Kino flows, but they're like Kino flows. These are actually some units I found on Amazon that are actually pretty affordable. And they are slightly green biased. So we just got some minus green gel. I think this is a eighth or a quarter minus green on there right now to kind of knock some of that green out and bring it back more neutral and actually works really well. We've got two lights back here to kind of counteract the sunlight coming in through the windows so that it's not uh, too backlit. And then this light goes through the diffusion to kind of make one big light source. And I actually like the, the key light to be about this distance from the subject and cameras. So kind of in line with where the A camera is. Then over here, we've just got a bounce for a nice little fill so it's not too harsh and contrasty. These are just general interviews, so we don't want it to be too strong and dynamic. It's just got to be nice and flattering and soft. And then back here, we've got our edge light or hair light, whatever you want to call it. And that's just to kind of help separate them from the background. And we're shooting a pretty fast aperture, so shallow depth of field to kind of all this will just be blurred out. We did have a light set up over here because yesterday we were doing some lights on the reverse uh, angle on this room and we used that light it's an LED light we kind of punched it through the curtains over there to put some kind of like pattern and texture on the wall we didn't use that for this setup just because it didn't look quite as nice with the bookshelf and everything um, and you may have seen that we have two microphones uh, rigged here one of them is the Rode NTG2 that's a shotgun microphone and the other one is a cardioid we were just testing them out to see kind of which one was going to sound the best um, this is a little bit of a cheaper microphone uh, I actually use the NTG2 most of the time, but I uh, just thought we'd uh, try it out and have some fun because the Tascam DR60 that we're recording with can record two channels anyway, so might as well, right? So we're using our lights that we brought, and oftentimes you come into a location and there's lights already. Now you might want to use them as a special, like this bookshelf had some lights in it that we decided not to use because it just looked kind of dirty, but you might want that if that's kind of what you're into. But there's also typically light fixtures in the room. Almost always you're going to want to turn these off. Uh, this is a different color temperature, so it's a lot more orange, or more, it's a warmer color temp than these ones. And if you have mi different light sources mixed, it's going to make your image a lot more muddier, uh, a lot dirtier looking. So I recommend just using you know, color balanced lights. So these are daylight balanced. So we've got the windows, sunlight, daylight, and we've got the lights that are daylight balanced. And we don't have any tungsten or warm lighting fixtures messing with that. So that's it, that's kind of how you light and set up a basic interview. Uh, key takeaway in my mind is doing the key light from that back side of your talent. And I can uh, insert a sample of what that looks like right here. So here's the actual interview setup. We've got camera A right here, and we've got camera B right there, and camera C is our behind the scenes camera. Now, I'm obviously the interviewee in this scenario, and I'm talking to the interviewer. So here's what I was talking about where that key light is on the back side, so like the back side of talent, right? front side, back side. Whereas if the key light were over on this side of me, it would be the front side. So all the shadows would be falling that way. Right now they're kind of all falling this way. And what that does is adds a nice little contrast to my face, adds a little contour, some nice dynamics, but it's still soft because it's a big source, fairly close, and the light is soft because it's fluorescent. So by doing that back side lighting, I'm able to cast all the shadows kind of towards the camera in a sense, and it gives a nice little contrast and some dynamic to the image. Now, it's really important to light because if you don't light, it looks like this. And this is what it looks like without any lights. Well, that's not true. There are some lights on, but there are the lights in the room. It looks pretty disgusting. A lot of people say that you know modern cameras do really well in low lights, so you don't need a lot of lights, but you definitely need some lights. Otherwise, you get stuck in situations like this. So if you ever hear someone say that you don't need lights because the cameras are so great, tell them that they need to correct themselves because you absolutely need lights. It helps shape your image. It gives you that nice polished look, the professional look, rather than just filming with the ambient light in the room. So besides just the lighting to help make a room look nice, you can also do some kind of set dressing and decoration. Yesterday, we actually swapped that painting for a different one or photograph on the wall because the one that was up there is over here. 
and just it didn't it didn't look very very nice. It, it was kind of distracting. The red and the green very very harsh, um, and it was just kind of odd. I thought so. We swapped it with a much more neutral, just kind of oh a nice green flower kind of thing. Uh, it helps add to the wall, so it's not just blank but it's uh, better than that chili pepper thing. Another thing we did was today over here, I'll show you. I really hate doors and doorknobs and locks and all this stuff. It's like this stuff in the background is just, it's just distracting because it's, it's something that breaks up this, this large texture. You have this point in the background that everyone's eyes going to go to. Now, what is that? Oh, it's a doorknob. Where's that door go to? I don't know. And then they're not paying attention to the interview. So what we did, was we went and found a plant to cover it up. And that helps add some nice, you know, it's a nice nature element to an otherwise kind of boring uh, hotel room, but it also serves the purpose of covering up that doorknob and just adding something that's a little bit more pleasant to look at, look at in the background. This Rice Krispie bar was not here prior when we were filming, so make sure you're not leaving treats around set. We're traveling with all this equipment and to keep weight down because we want to get on the plane, uh, we have to make some improvised uh, solutions for some problems. So oftentimes you need sandbags on set to kind of weigh things down and keep them from falling over. Well, sandbags are just weight and you can buy bags that you fill up on location if you have sand or rocks to put in there. But you can also just get some bungee cords and attach it to like a heavy suitcase or over there there's a backpack. and. All you need is the weight, so it doesn't really matter what it is. It doesn't look quite as nice, but in a pinch, especially if you're traveling, that's a good way to secure things with bungee cords and a backpack. Another thing to consider when you're filming is that oftentimes you don't really get to pick the location, but if you do, you want a space that's large. Uh, this is actually a hospitality suite at the Marriott, and it was one of the few locations that were available to us, but the hospitality suite worked out really nice because it's bigger than your traditional hotel room, and it gives you a little bit more depth to play with, as well as just space for all the gear and equipment. Uh, it's really important when you're doing anything like this that you are taking the time to light it and mic it and set the cameras up and have two cameras rather than just one. Uh, all those things are really important to help factor into the production value, but oftentimes if you don't have the room, the space to play with, you're not going to have that depth. You're not going to get that shallow depth of field look that a lot of people find attractive, and you're not going to have room to do this kind of stuff. So if you can get access to a hospitality suite, if you have to film at a hotel or another large space, you're always going to want to do that. Now you do have to factor in like audio concerns and foot traffic and all those other things. Um, so sometimes you are kind of limited, but if you are filming at a hotel, hospitality suite works fairly well.